In this video, we're going to follow up on the previous lesson on energy and fuel to clarify a couple of important issues regarding ATP and what we mean by ATP synthesis. The first point is that when ATP provides energy to the protein molecules that mediate cellular work reactions, it occurs like this. ATP is broken into two parts, ADP, that's adenosine diphosphate because it has only two phosphates, and a free phosphate group. ADP plus phosphate. Remember that ATP is carrying chemical potential energy in that mini chain of three phosphates. If we break off that last phosphate in the mini chain, a little bit of energy is released and what we have is a nucleoside diphosphate plus the phosphate group that got broken off. So what happens is that the enzymes and motor proteins and transport proteins and such that require ATP energy in order to complete the cellular work that's getting done, they're using this little blast of energy by attaching to ATP and cleaving off a phosphate. As the result of the sum total of all these ATP requiring reactions in our cells, we are, well, able to stay alive and do what we do, and over the course of a typical day, we are consuming what amounts to a boatload of ATP energy. And in this conversion of ATP, we're also producing a boatload of ADP and phosphate. The amazing statistic that I'd like to share with you now is based on a calculation made by Professor Bailey on just how much ATP is used in our bodies. Based on a typical person's daily caloric intake, and assuming that about 50% of these calories get converted into ATP energy, the bottom line is that our cells have to use about 236 pounds of ATP per day. That's 10 million molecules of ATP per cell every second. Now at first, this should not seem reasonable. There must be a miscalculation, right? You should be saying things like, in order to make 236 pounds of ATP, you'd need to eat 500 pounds of food. And in truth, you'd have to actually eat a lot more than that. But no, there's nothing grossly wrong with this calculation. To understand why, realize that we're not using up 236 pounds of ATP and then throwing away the ADP and phosphate that forms. What really happens is that we do burn through about that much ATP, but the leftovers are immediately recycled. 10 million molecules of ATP per cell are used every second, but another 10 million are generated every second by reattaching the phosphate to the ADP. So even though it's 236 pounds of ATP that is used and produced over the course of 24 hours, the actual amount of ATP or ADP in your body at any given time is far, far less. Now the calories that you consume with your daily food intake has to account for the energy needed to reattach that many phosphates to ADP over and over and over again, all day long and all night long. Consume a wad of ATP every second and regenerate an identical quantity of ATP every second. It's a never-ending cycle that goes on until death. Much of this module is dedicated to the processes by which ATP gets regenerated from ADP plus phosphate. Sometimes we refer to this as ATP synthesis, but it's probably more precise to call it ATP recharging. A mistake that students frequently make is to confuse this recycling or recharging process with the making of brand new ATP molecules from scratch. Now we do need to do a little bit of this de novo ATP production in our cells, but it's minuscule compared to the amount of ATP that's generated from the reactions that recharge or recycle a molecule of ATP by taking a molecule of ADP and putting on the third phosphate. We're going to move now directly into discussing these cellular fueling reactions.